Hey guys, what's up? Chemistry here. This is part four of my FL Studio tutorial series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a very simple, um, small mix. We'll be mixing five instruments here, three drum sounds and a pad, a pad and a bass. Um, I guess I'll just go through my instruments. So I got kick drum, um, a open hi-hat, a clap, Trans bass 9 and airwave transos 2 as a pad. So I'm going to be getting into a lot of equalizing and a little bit of side chaining for the pads later on. But the first thing you're going to have to do is, well, make a pattern for each and every one of your channels. So for the kick drum, I'll just uh, make it beat on every on beat, just playing at the tempo, which is 130 beats per measure. Uh, the hi hat will be hitting the off beat, and the clap will be hitting 4 and 12, which is just like I showed you in the previous tutorial. Now for the bass line, I'm going to keep it really solid and play it on G. And I'm just going to keep on repeating that till at the end, where it's just going to change slightly. Um, at the end of this bar, I'm going to raise these two last notes up to A. So it's pretty simple. Next, I'm going to use these saws in the midsection. Put in G, G again, G again, and one more. Then I'm going to use the perfect fifth of G, which is D. And lastly, we're going to give an octave to the lower G. So it's just G, D, G. At the end, we're going to modify the last bar, just like in the bass line. And raise the upper note here um, to A. So it should sound like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the master channel and lower the volume down to 75% just because it's pretty darn loud. Um, and then next, we're going to link every single one of my channels to the mixer. So once you got all of those um, patterns ready, you just link, link them to the mixer. Now that they're all linked, um, next thing you got to do is go into this effects section and open up the parametric EQ2 for every single one of those channels so from the kick drum to the pads just give every single one um, parametric EQ2 and that is when the equalizing comes in so if you could imagine having um, five piano players and five pianos being played at once um, in one room in like this band and um, they all had to kind of play the same song and you gave a pattern to every single one of them um, every piano player if they all played about the same thing at the same spot of the piano it would all sound very muddy and messy which is really not good right so what we're what we would do to them is give them a spot to one of them to one of these piano players would give them the low end of the piano then for another one, we give him the mid section, and maybe the third one he could have the high section. Now there's two left, so for the two other guys playing piano, maybe you could give one of them uh, a different piano, uh, less to play, or even just let them play between low and mid. Give the other guy mid to high. So um, everyone kind of plays their own little section, so that it doesn't sound so messy and actually sounds very full. 
that is the same concept when it comes to equalizing. We have five instruments here. Sure, they're not all pianos, but um, we're still um, giving them all their own kind of spot to shine and taking out certain areas that we don't want them to shine because we have another instrument that's going to shine at that spot. So um, if you look at this here, um, from the very left is the low end, very high is uh, on the right end. So it's kind of going from low frequencies all the way up to the highest. Um, so if we have this kick playing alone, it here is it is uh, kind of showing me where um, the kick is producing the frequencies. Um, you can hear that it's uh, lagging quite nicely. Uh, it's getting really red around this area. That just means that there's a big release in the low end. What you want to do is um, click this sideways V here, and turn it down twice, and then go to this dot that's right underneath it and turn that down all the way. So it kind of makes this little hill. That basically just cuts off the low ends. And you can move that around to cut off as much low end as you want. So for the kick, you probably want to just cut out from 50 to about maybe 70 hertz. I like to just keep at one uh, at 55. Um, then I would boost from 100 to 250 or so, so around here, and give that release a little more power. Then I would. Um, take the mid section here and put it all the way down from 550 hertz to about 70 or I'm sorry 700 and then use this knob here to cut it a little bit um, more in a specific area then we would use the high ends and just boost those a little bit and not make something too dramatic so definitely be cautious about the way you equalize. So next we have the hi-hat. Same thing, um, but just you can see that's getting more red around the high ends. You're going to cut down the midsection and just kind of give it a noise sound. Boost up the high ends. And go to the clap and do pretty much the exact same thing. Then we're going to go to the trance bass, and we're going to do something very similar to the kick. We're going to equalize it down to about um, 100 hertz instead of um, about 55, and then boost up around 150 hertz to about 300 hertz, maybe even to about uh, boost a little bit around 600, and then take out the high ends. Not too much, but you know. Definitely remove most of it, depending on what bass you have, of course. This is just very um, generic and um, a general tutorial on equalizing, for sure. Next, we have airwave transaws here, the pad. Uh, we're going to do something similar to the hat and the clap. We're going to take around, uh, cut out the low and a bit of the mids, and then boost up the highs. So it's kind of giving it a high pass sound. So they're all nicely put in their own little spot, just like those five pianos. And um, now I'm going to play them all together, and uh, hopefully it'll sound a little bit better. So you can tell that's a little bit more clear, but we still haven't balanced the um, patterns yet, so that's the next step, is to balance all the patterns with uh, these faders here so it just I'm gonna be turning them down turning them up that sort of thing so I'm just gonna play them all and um, with just my ear I'm going to tell uh, where all the instruments should probably be
So that's probably not the best, but um, it'll do for now. What I did was I left the kick where it was because it does have to stay at a pretty high volume, if not the highest. Then uh, for the open hi-hat, I lowered it down quite a bit. Shouldn't be the main attention in an uplifting track. In uh, the clap section, I moved it a bit higher than the hats, but definitely lower than the kick. For the bass, I moved it around the um, where the offbeat hi hat was, so kind of turning down the offbeat. And then for the airwave transaw, I kind of left it a little bit higher than the clap because it is kind of a lead at this point. So now I'm going to add a side chaining to the pads. So I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on the bass drum here, the bass drum channel, and I'm going to look down right underneath the um, at the bottom of the airwave transaw channel. You see this little light? Uh, if you turn that on, a knob will appear, and um, if that changes the sound of your kick, just turn down that knob. Then scroll over to the Airway Transaw 2 channel. The knob will disappear, but the light will still be on. Next thing you have to do is open up a limiter, a fruity limiter, and uh, <clears throat> notice how there's limit and comp here. What you want to do is you want to click comp, which is short for compressor, I think, and then up the side chain to 1. Now you're going to be left with threshold, ratio, and knee. What you want to do is turn down the threshold to a little above 0 because what the threshold basically does is when it's at 0 you won't actually hear the um, pad when the kick comes in. Um, if you don't know what side chaining is, it's basically when the kick comes in the, the note or the instrument cuts out and then comes back in. And then when the next kick comes in, it cuts out again. So it's just cutting out and coming back in uh, rather quickly. Um, it doesn't have to be on the kick. It can be on other instruments, but usually, or typically, especially for trance, it's on the kick. So what I'm going to do is going to put it a little bit above zero on the threshold, just so you can still kind of hear that pad even though the um, kick is beating. And then on the ratio, I'm going to turn that up and the knee Although uh, I'm going to play them alone, the kick and the airway transols, just so you guys can um, watch me uh, just modify the side chain effect. So it's definitely a bit of a bit of a mild side chain. It's not too uh, dramatic. Anyway, so I'm going to play all that together. Sorry about the sound quality there. Um, ASFL has been open for a while. I had to redo this in tutorial after uploading it. Because um, something happened with my editing and I uh, only uploaded like three quarters of the video. So here I am doing it again like three hours later. Um, but yeah, so that's basically it. Um, kind of a little more brief than my last tutorial that I tried to upload. But I hope you still get the idea and still learn something from this. If you actually were able to watch the tutorial that I uploaded. Um, sorry, that was embarrassing. And... Now you get the entire tutorial, right? So, anyway, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't know what I'm going to be showing you or teaching you. But uh, if you want to leave me any requests, I'll definitely get around to help you out on that. So, yeah, see you tomorrow.